as our practice now, we're going to turn uh, our attention to the communion, take a few moments to consider uh, a scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, a very familiar passage to you, but we can turn there if you'd like. And we're going to take some time to remember and recall what Christ did for us on the cross. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three opens up saying, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And I just want to reflect on the, the, that opening phrase. For Paul received from the Lord that which he also delivered to them. That the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. First, let's note that this statement was instituted, that this sacrament was instituted and ordained by Christ Jesus himself. Paul says, for I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you. This sacrament, this feast, this celebration is, was no invention of man's brain. It was not a human tradition. There's really no other basis, but instead was ordained and instituted by the Lord Jesus himself. And he did this because he knew it would be a good thing for us and profitable for us. Because in our sinful humanity, we're fickle people. We're forgetful. We're prone to wander, as that familiar hymn so aptly says. So Jesus instituted this sacrament and requires this service of us. And we're to come to this sacrament knowing that the Lord of glory himself invited us. And then a second note, the timing of when this ordinance was instituted, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. So not only did the Lord Jesus himself institute this sacrament, but in his divine wisdom made a choice to administer it in the night in which he was betrayed. A profound thought. While Jesus was preparing himself for the greatest work of love that was ever shown to humanity, laying down his life for us, he was showing us his infinite love and mercy by ordaining this sacrament while at the same time preparing himself to die for us. At the time when our Savior was undergoing the greatest, the most painful, the most difficult work that was ever performed, he took this time deliberately while completing the work of redemption and the salvation of our souls to institute and administer this sacrament. His thoughts at this terrible time were on doing what would further our salvation <clears throat> and make effectual to us his work of redemption. And so might we always bear in mind as we consider this time that due to the one who instituted it and when he chose to institute it, it was done in a, in a purposeful way. He knew that it would be of inestimable value to us and therefore something we ought to hold in high esteem. <clears throat> as I was preparing for this time, I came across a, a part of a sermon, an excerpt from a sermon from a man named Thomas Hawes that it was really impressed me. And I want to just share this part with you as we complete this, this time. He said, Freely moved by the mere goodness of his heart and out of the pure compassion to us, Jesus offered to stand in our stead. And since to save us, he must be made man. His love stooped to every meanness or poverty or lowliness, stooped to every meanness of our condition in the form of a servant, to the death of a slave. Love brought him down from the throne of glory. Love clothed him with a body like our own. Love urged him on through all the painful steps of his afflicted life. The waters of trouble were never able to quench it, nor the floods of persecution drown it. Love put the cup of trembling into his hand. Love bid him drink the last drop of all its dregs. For having loved his own, he loved them to the end. His love abode till he cried, It is finished. When, having sealed with blood the sure and well-ordered covenant, his soul was dismissed and he went to begin his triumphs over death, hell, and the grave. And when he rose again, love was his first expression. Go to my brethren and say, I ascend to my father and to your father. Love carried him to the right hand of God, and there he is at this moment, showing forth the unchangeableness of his affection by ever living to make intercession for us and pleading before the throne the marks of love so deeply engraved in his hands and in his side. Then he said, And when can we then be called so feelingly to remember this love? As an ordinance where all its glory is made to pass before us. <clears throat>